you're standing here on our public property. And then you will try and tell us, excuse me, would you move on? So for the sake of their wants for security, they will violate our rights. Now that's not right. Now, just like G20, as I told you, I could sit here and protest with you. And uh, what, soon, there's gonna be a bunch of other guys coming. Oh, okay, maybe a bunch of guys are But we're not gonna wait for them to come. We're gonna move on. Right? See, that's what we do for the protest. We just move on. Now look, take a look at it now. Now look, you see? Now you were stuck. Now you see that, you're stuck. Stuck with just the mics hanging around me, right? No one will comment on tape, but it shows that my love is still there. But I'm gonna tell you a reason why I ask you not to protest in the downtown court. Because in the long end, it's only gonna harm your family, your friends, and your loved ones. It's only gonna harm those who are close to you. Because you're gonna be dealing with those who are the frontline workers. Now, approximately, March 28th, I was abused by a security, by abuse of authority, which James has shown in the video. And I think there's going to be a link, that there will be a link you can turn on that will show you what happened in Scarborough. Now, that's when I went to protest my exclusion from a mural debate. But I went near the debate. Now, at that point, I thought I had to campaign on race. And I did not want to put these people into a race war. So I pulled out of the election. But about a month passed by, and the more I went out on the streets, the more people were screaming at me, Clark, Clark, what are you doing, what are you doing? What do you pull out of the election for? I tried to explain to them, oh, here he is, take a look, that's him, that's the guy there. That's the guy there with the incident, yes. That's the guy there. Now, as you can see, now you can see that. Now, we're gonna move on, and I'm gonna show you something. Now, as you can see him standing there, but you gotta take a clear view of him. That's the guy there, so I'm coming up here. I'm coming up here. I come up, and my buddy owns Mikado's. So my buddy owns Mikado's, and I come up here. You hear that? You're going to get arrested tonight. Well, well, I've been banned from this property. So I went to rent Mayor Clark in here. At that point, that security guard, now as you notice, he just walked away. But when George Smitherman had a fundraiser here, I believe that Smitherman workers paid him off and said Clark just announced here that he's re-entering the mayor's race. We want to keep him away from this fundraising. So when I went to, to write Mayor Clark over here, and I started to write M. The security guard came and he blocked me. Then I, so I said, what are you doing? So I went to go write again, he blocked me again. So then he starts grabbing at me. So at that point, I go down towards here. We're gonna go inside that building. But I don't know nobody in that building. And there'll be a lot of other security guards in that building. So I, hey, what's up, bro? What's up, bro? Yeah, one love. So I decided the only way I could get away from the security guard was to duck through the door here, through the Mercados. So I ducked through the doors through the Mercado. And as soon as I ducked in, next thing, as you heard, what did the last guy just said to you? Somebody was chasing him, right? Security guard was chasing me. So now, security guard goes to grab at me at that table. Now, you see all those tables? Can you see the tables through it? Now, the tables are loaded with all sorts of guests, the finest in the land. So I stepped out of the way. When I stepped out of the way, the security guard dived at me. When he dived at me, he slips. He hits the first table. The first table went flying down. Then he slips and tries to get back up and he tries to grab the second table. But the second table wasn't sturdy. So the second table went flying all over him. So then he's like this trying to get back up again and he grabs at the drape of the next table. And the next table come crushing down. And next thing you know, these plates and cups and everything came banging him on the head. So at that point, I run towards the back here. And when I got back here, I was encountered by a bunch of Mercado staff. And at that point I said, what right does he have to attack me, to be following me around? He just assaulted me. 
And at that point, one of the Mikado staff showed me the back door. So, at that point, I ran through this back door and I came out here. Now, what happens though, as you can see, my friend Dominique came up and he freaked out at me. He says, yeah, well, Kevin, don't come back in my restaurant. I have known Dominique for years. Here, before there was anything here. That's where I used to sleep when I was homeless. There's gonna be a link that will show you John Massey. Now, John Massey, Massey got burnt up in the bank machine. Massey used to sleep here before he died, okay? Until it, whatever happened. So now, in here, I've got the greatest friends and I've got the most acceptance. I've been given food whenever I was hungry, water when I was thirsty, and you saw today. Show them the juice. Where do we get the juice from? Mercados. From Mercados, at no cost. But now, my friend is angry at me. And I, in turn, thank God I never lost my friend's friendship, right? But now, if somebody is hungry and I need to get them food, now I cannot go in here and feed them no more. Why? Because I stand up and protest and someone attacking me on the streets. Now, whether even though Smitherman's campaign was in the wrong, and even though that security guard was in the wrong, okay, I should have known that for me to stand up there and combat him, nothing good can come off it. The only thing good that could have come off it is for you to walk away, because then you would not give him any justification and any self-gratification. And that's the same thing with the G20 and the fence. That big fence is there to attract us, for us to come down there and to rant and rave. And with so much police forces, most courts were closed from the 24th on to the 27th. Why? Because they're banking on you coming, on you coming there to protest. And when you come to protest, then they use these law enforcement and they'll segregate a certain amount of people and they'll arrest a certain amount of quota and then you'll be locked up in a fence down at Eastern Avenue. And what solutions can you bring? The only solution you can bring is to take the protest away from G20, to take the cards away from them. Go to Post Road, go to the Bradley Path, go to Scarborough, go to Etobicoke, go to Mal Lastman Square in North York. Protest as far away as you can from where the G20 summit is. And then the Prime Minister of Canada now has to explain, but he doesn't have to explain to the people in downtown. Downtown we have hookers, we have drug addicts, we have homeless people, people who live in rooming houses, we have all these cab drivers who are there, okay? So you have nobody who really has a voice. But if you protest in the area where the people have the voice, then the Prime Minister and all those in authority have to explain with nine, nine What's it? $920 million being spent on security. How come their nice plush area was disrupted by so much protest? Where was the police force? And then it will come to light that, ma'am, you're a Canadian citizen, you're a taxpayer. But to tell you the truth, we didn't spend $920 million on security for you. We spent it on security for these few. And that will put the G20 leaders, the Prime Minister, and all those who organized this summit in their place. Because now you'll have the people on your side. Because first you'll be just a rowdy protester. But then the people will say, how did all these people get in our area? I thought we were supposed to be protected. And all their anger will be lashed out at those in authority. Beat them at their own game. Don't play their game. Kevin Clark, your next mayor says, love will always be the same. Simple. But for me to put on my robe would make me in the same boat as those in the G20. I would be trying to put on a show. I didn't come down here tonight to protect it, put on a show. I came down here tonight to keep your children out of jail, to keep your husband out of jail, to keep your brother, to keep your sisters, and keep those out of jail. Why? Because I fear that there will be a lot of lives lost if we fall into their game. Because for you to put a wrongful death lawsuit, against one of those, it will take you a lifetime. You will die.
before you come to a conclusion. Keep your loved ones, keep your family, and let's protest within our community. Let's spread the word, and then we'll have some unity. And that's what it's about.